welcome to the Jodie Bunting podcast, where today we're talking about how to improve your mental health. And our special guest today is Mel Bridger, also known as the Mummy Trainer. She's an award-winning personal trainer, the Beat Fitness Program creator, a blogger, a podcaster of the Confessions of the profic- Fitness Professionals. Hi, Mel. How are you doing? Hello. It's a bit of a mouthful, just, isn't it? You do just a couple of things then, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I take after my mother jack of all trades and master of some not none I like the way you said that so master of some <laughs> now you're from Birmingham just down the road just down the A38 from Derby where I am I um, and we know each other through the Rachel Holmes Fit Pro supporters group mm-hmm. and I was recommended to chat with you because you really get the people going the supporters group <laughs> I've been told um probably my honesty I think that's what it is uh, I don't mince my words very often and that seems to go down quite well <laughs> oh we love it we love people like that and Rachel herself call, calls you the ice cream queen oh, tell God. us the story behind that all right it's not because I eat loads of ice cream and it, it just started off as a joke so um during Covid obviously that was when I joined the support group, I think just before a few months before. And then when COVID hit, it was a real source of support. And it was just somewhere as fitness professionals, we could go to events. And yeah. Rachel's an absolute legend, as we know. So this was when Reels was just starting out or just beginning to become a thing. And she was posting all of these fitness reels, like with planks and everything else. Um, and the supporters that know me will tell you, I don't plank. <laughs> you don't? I don't plank. So what happened was Rachel filmed this routine where um, she was doing some kind of plank combo. So I remixed it. And while she did it, I stood there and ate an ice cream. And I think my reel got more views than hers did. (laughs) And this is the annoying thing of social media, isn't it? As fit pros, we spend hours and hours, half Mm. our lives doing these things, but actually something by accident, something that's actually funny, does our businesses better? Yeah, it's uh, it's strong became a thing then where I would um, remix Rachel's reels or people would tag me and ask me to remix Rachel's reels. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love it. But it's funny. But I've known her for years, so I knew that she was gonna you know, she wouldn't take it badly. Yeah, sure. The banter was there and it was it was really good fun. So that's where the, the ice cream queen comes from. So the other thing I've been learning about you as well is that during lockdown, as well as joining the supporters, you also trained as a teacher, didn't you? Tell us about that. Oh, yeah. So um I've got two small children, or rather they're not so small now, one's at high school. Um, And I had to homeschool, as did a lot of parents, in addition to uh, running a business and doing a couple of other things to try and make ends meet. Um, Because as we know, COVID heavily impacted the fitness industry. And so I did lots of different types of work to be able to still generate revenue. So I was really worried about the longevity of the fitness industry. The longer we were in lockdown, the more concerned I became about whether or not I was able going able to be able to continue a mouthful (laughs) down that vein and I wouldn't think I was a teacher would you so I decided to train as a teacher I was already working as a tutor and an assessor in the fitness industry and I thought maybe I can turn my hand and do this mainstream so if the fitness industry doesn't survive I have something else to fall back on so um yeah I started university in September 2020 uh, did some of it online, did some of it offline, and I graduated last year with my diploma in education and training. Which is why your Facebook photo is so cool, because it's in <laughs> your graduation gown with yeah. the weights, isn't it? It is, yeah. A really good friend uh, did a photo shoot with me after I graduated, and yeah, the pictures are just mint. <laughs> Amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Right. So today we are going to be chatting about mental health, how we can improve it. So can we start by asking your personal experience of mental health? Uh, Yeah, no problem. So uh, I've had, um, I'm trying to think, my daughter is nearly 12. So probably about 17 years, 18 years of personal experience with um, anxiety and depression. So way back before I had my children, I went to the doctors because I just didn't feel right. 
Yeah. And I saw a really good doctor and he was like, can we do this test type thing? If you've ever gone to the doctors when you're concerned about your mental health, you have to go through this process of different questions and you have to do ratings and everything else. And they kind of like give you a result at the end of it. But my doctor was, he just saw something straight away. He said, something's not right. So I was like, right, okay. So he talked to me about taking antidepressants. Now, I didn't know anybody who was taking them. It's very much a taboo subject. You're going back nearly 20 years then. Yeah. And it just wasn't something that you could openly have a conversation with, with anybody about, you know? So I went away and I was like, no, this, I can't do that. People, you know, we, I don't have to take things like that you know we we don't do that i'm not crazy yeah um and obviously i'm using terminology from quite a while back before anybody gets offended yeah um so that was my own personal experience and then i still didn't feel right so i went back to the same doctor and decided that i was going to go on antidepressants and just not tell anybody so there was a, a small group obviously you need support if um in case anybody doesn't know that you definitely yeah. need support, even if it's just one person that you can talk to completely. So I was very lucky. My husband is extremely supportive. So when I first went on to antidepressants, when I first realized that it was quite severe, I really struggled with my day job and I had to take time off. Um, then I was on and off antidepressants probably for about a decade or so. Um, and it was hard. It was hard because you just didn't talk to people about these kinds of things. And I remember starting to speak out a little bit more to family members because I suffered really badly with postnatal depression after I had my daughter, but I didn't realize that that is what it was. And so I went back to talk to again, something's not right. So um, I ended up back on antidepressants again for postnatal depression. And then I decided to talk to more family members about it. And one of my siblings said, you need to tell mum. And I was like, oh my God. So my mum is an amazing woman. So I'm the youngest of five. And back in her day, you just got on with things, you know, you broke your leg, get on with it. <laughs> so yeah. I think depression did not exist back then. So I was really scared of telling my mom, not because I thought she was going to judge me, but because I just didn't want to put the stress yeah. onto her. And telling my mom was one of the best things I could have done. I wish I'd have done it sooner because then she gave me not permission, but um, I felt I could share my story with others then. And I spoke to my mum about it and she said, you help so many people, why not do this as well? So I started to share my story about mental health. And in addition to working in the fitness industry, I had a real interest in digital marketing. And so I used to go to a lot of different conferences and they did masterminds. And I met an incredible man from the States um, who just saw in me that something wasn't right. Because this is the thing with depression, you see, you don't just have it and then it stops. And then that's it, you don't suffer from depression anymore. I see it as... I will always suffer from it. I just, I get stronger or I don't need as much support. I don't know if that makes sense. A little bit like yeah. quitting smoking type yeah. thing. That it's always there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you know? when you suffered it after the baby and the, what mm. you suffered before, was it the same or was it different? No, it was different. I'd say it was... Um, when you become a parent your life completely changes and the way that you feel about things completely change and things that would have troubled you or caused you stress before don't really concern you right now this is my personal experience there's things that you would have stressed about but when you've got kids you're like i haven't got time to stress about that you know (laughs) so it, it was a different kind of stress um and in some aspects it felt worse because even though I'm married, I was responsible for a small human being as well. And I wanted to know why I wasn't having the same kind of um, euphoric feelings that everybody else is supposed to get when they have children. And I wanted to know why I still felt so bad. And like, for me, I always describe it as something just didn't feel right. Yeah. And I'm always, you become more aware of it then. So for me, if I was to ever have an episode again, um, and I did after I had my son again, bang, suffered with postnatal depression. So I just rang the doctor. I went, yeah, something's not right. I need to go back on medication. And they did, they still do the talk with you. And then when I chatted to that doctor, because it was a different one, she was like, you obviously know what you're talking about. I said, yeah, I could even tell you what meds you need to give me and the dosage. <laughs> if I'm ringing you to tell you that I need it, I've got to a point where I feel like I can't cope yeah. anymore, you know? Um, so touch wood, I haven't had them f- for a while, for a while, for for a while, a few years or so yeah. now, and fitness is my antidepressant, you know. 
Right. But to go go back to what I was saying before when I was talking about sharing my story, yeah. um, I was going to these events and this guy, I met this incredible guy, just have you ever met anybody and they're just on your wavelength and you just you yeah. feel like you've known them for such a long time. And we got to talking about lots of different things and he was really supportive and we kept in touch and I went back to the event the following year, but I got in contact with the support with the promoter and said, look, this is the experience I had during your mastermind. It, it was like an epiphany and I met this guy and it was incredible. And the promoter who is it's a millionaire, very successful businessman contacted me and asked me if I would share my story on stage. And mm-hmm. I did that in front of like seven, 800 business people that are earning five, six, seven figures a year. Yeah and shared my story in front of all of these people. And that's how I accidentally got into public speaking in the digital marketing arena, but that's a whole nother story. Yeah. <laughs> so, and how, what, what really got you out of that? Um, you know, how did you get off the antidepressants? What improved your mental health? Was it just the antidepressants and time? Um, I think I had to, I had to be a bit kinder to myself. Uh, I recognized when I needed support. And I don't, different people dif- deal with it in different ways. For me, if I ever need them again in the future, I know that they're there. So if ever anybody yeah. talks to me about it, and since sharing my story publicly, because somebody filmed me when I shared my story on stage yeah. at this event. And so that then I put that out on social media. And as you can probably imagine, it went mad, just crazy. And lots of people contacted me and were like, we never thought that somebody like you would struggle with something like this. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, including family members that reached out as well. And they were like, we had no idea. Wow. Um, you know, and so I, I know what my triggers are. And I think it was time, yes, talking to people more. But fitness was the biggie for me. That was really what got me off and helped yeah. me to power forward. And what do you think led to the depression? Obviously, postnatal is understandable, but your your other times when you've had to take antidepressants, yeah. is it stress? Is it lifestyle? What's the, the cause for you personally? It's OK. This is going to sound really weird, right? Go with me. Yeah. Did you try again? <laughs> <that> Sorry. Siri? <laughs> Might have to watch. Be it's quiet, okay. Siri. <laughs> Leave that in. <laughs> um. Do you know what you know when you're gonna get a cold? Do you ever feel like you know when you're gonna get a cold? Yeah, that's a little bit like it. It doesn't feel like you're going to get a cold. Yeah. You just know that there's something wrong. If I was to go right back and try and identify exactly what my triggers were, without thousands of pounds on therapy, I probably couldn't tell you. Yeah. But I did have a very toxic boss years and years ago. She was extremely manipulative. She was. Just, she's one of the the vilest people I've ever met in my life. Yeah. Um, and that was a massive trigger for me. She made, she basically made my life hell um, when I worked for her. And when I left and moved on to the following job, the impact of that followed with me because it was that following job that I had where I ended up going off work and phase returned to work and really struggled and everything else. So that was definitely a key factor. Whether or not it was the main trigger, I don't know, but I know that um even now thinking about it i don't know i can't even remember how long ago it was that i had that job i still go Ugh, whenever i think of this particular individual um but i'm a lot stronger as an individual now and i'm a completely different person to the one that i was back then and did that lead you into doing your own business is that what pushed you forwards my daughter is the reason why i ended up working for myself full time um so i used to dance i used to be a professional salsa dancer in addition to having a day job I know Uh, and I danced for years people are going to be like oh my god how many things has this woman done (laughs) but I'm a lot older than I look and people I've been around a long time (laughs) Jodie right so I've I've gained a lot of experience so I danced started dancing at the age of 22 21 22 and absolutely fell in love with it and was very fortunate to be given lots of opportunities to be able to go out there hone my craft and and travel the world and and get paid for it basically so i always did that in addition to having a day job for stability because you never know when you freelance with anything it's difficult so when i when i had my daughter when i found out i was pregnant and you know, you get into the stages where you're going off on maternity leave and I'm at home and I'm quite liking being at home because I still continue to run my side hustle because I'd got into Zumba at this point. I was the first person in my area to get into Zumba 
made an insane amount of money as you do when you've got yeah. 100 people trying to get into your class because no one's heard of this thing before you know <laughs> so i was like i quite like this and then when i had my daughter this is going to sound like a cliche but i took one look at her and i was like i can't go back to work right you know yeah. but i was very fortunate that i built up my business so when you get people that are like oh you're a stay-at-home mom yeah i probably worked harder in the 12 years that i worked for myself than i did when i had a job yeah great okay i'll tell you a little bit about my little uh experience with mental health because i was very much like you said about your family just not really speaking about it don't really understand it and the, the thought of being on antidepressants it's like you know like you all people you, you think it is somebody who's mentally unstable that has to have mm -hmm. medication for this uh, and mine was brought on by alcohol drinking too much alcohol one day and i suffered something called ddd which is a uh, depersonalization derealization disorder um, mm -hmm. and basically for two weeks i was teaching my fitness class um, which a lot of people now know the term brain fog and I literally had brain fog for two weeks. You know, mm. I knew where I was going and what I was meant to be doing. But when I was teaching fitness, I was just putting my arms up like this, just doing tiny moves. So and, and me personally, that was an eye opener for me. You know, I really started to understand what all these years of people are telling me, uh, you know, that they, they are suffering from depression, anxiety, just not feeling themselves, which, again, you admitted there. Um, mm -hmm. Why do you think the stigma is still there, even though we are talking about it more and more? It's all about breaking the generational cycle. So even though times have changed, we have access to more information and everything else. If you've got someone in your family who's a strong individual and a firm believer that that is something that you should not be doing, it gets cascaded down. And it's down to us to break that generational cycle. So I talk to my children about um, and feeling anxious and feeling stressed. I haven't talked to my children about my experience. My daughter's getting older. Um, yeah. And one day we will sit down and have that conversation because I'm very open with my kids where I say, you can ask me anything. I'll always tell you the truth. You can tell me anything and you'll never get judged because I love my family. I'm the youngest of five. But again, that was passed down like generationally. You just get on with life. So I took it upon myself to just not share it with my family. And my family are very aware of it now and, and extremely supportive. But you always feel like you don't want to put that onus on people. And I do yeah. genuinely believe that... You can see it across the boards, um, people's opinions on poverty, people's opinion on, on gender, on sexuality, on, on race. It's down to us as individuals to break the generational cycle and say there shouldn't really be any topics out there that are taboo, whether they make you feel comfortable or yeah. not. Because if you don't feel comfortable with it, that's a you problem. That's not a me problem. And if I'm struggling with it, you're either going to support me or you're not the person I need around me. Yeah, that's so true. Um, so just talking about uh, antidepressants, mm -hmm. when I've spoken to my clients about them, I've never taken them personally. They basically say it dims down all their feelings, not only the, the bad ones, but also <clears throat> the good ones. So the kind of the kind of moving along life in kind of a, a numb state. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's how it how you felt? your personal experience initially yeah and it could be that simply um that the dosage was wrong i know yeah. that sounds very very um simplistic but it, it's true so i remember when i went back on them the last time i felt sick for a week and i said i don't like this feeling i feel like i'm out of control and my husband said you know the score like you you know this it's just been a while since you've been on them you need to give yourself some time and then you'll feel better about it um, and I remember one of the things that I changed when I took them last time was I took them at night. So I took them yeah. before I went to bed, whereas before I used to take them in the morning. So then they would kick in like midday and literally I could just feel like, I know when you're talking about brain fog, in addition to being a woman of a certain age. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know that feeling. So when I started to take them at night, um, it's almost like my nervous system would settle. I'm not a medical professional, but this is just my explanation. Yeah, sure would settle while I was asleep. So when I woke right. up, I felt that I could cope better and it got rid of like the numb feeling. It's almost like, do you ever have a dream you're trying to get away from someone and you're stuck yeah. in mud? It's like you're going through the motions. And I think I probably waited too long when I went on them when after having my children because I was scared of feeling like that around my kids. 
so that's why last time when I took them, I took them at night. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's good advice. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's heard your story uh, and they come to you for advice, what are your what are your initial advice? What is the initial advice you give to people about improving their mental health? People always make apologies or they give you a disclaimer prior to them sharing their story with you because they genuinely believe that they sh their story is not important or that they deserve, as some people think that they deserve to feel that way. So I always say that um, it doesn't matter if there are other people out there worse off than us, because it, again, if you're a person of a certain age, you would have been told that a lot when you moan about anything. Oh, for me, what was it? There's children starving in Africa you know, type thing, yeah. um, not belittling from that situation. But what I will always say is your situation is individual to you. And yes, there are other things going on out there in the world, but that does not reduce how powerful these feelings are for you right here, right now. And yeah. then I will talk to them, um, one, about what kind of support they have. Some of them say they don't have any, and that's why they've reached out to me. Yeah. And then the second thing I will say is, have you spoken to your doctor? Because not everybody is for antidepressants because of the stigma that comes with them but i always say go and speak to your doctor even if your doctor offers you antidepressants you don't have to take them you know i've also had people come to me and say my doctor's giving me antidepressants but i'm too scared to take them and i'll say well it's entirely up to you this is what i did when i took mine and the advice of taking them at night i've given to loads of people and they've noticed a difference and i'll say it doesn't make you a weaker person. I said, take them for a few weeks because you can't take them for a few days and you know it's not gonna make any difference. Yeah, You need to take them for a while and see whether or not you feel like you're benefiting. If you're benefiting, great. If you're not, then there's always something else. I always recommend um, CBT as well, cognitive behavioral therapy. Great, yeah, we love a bit of yeah. tapping. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I do. Um, I've taught my kids breath work so if my kids are having a moment of anxiety, I'll hold their hands and I'll breathe with them. And breath work really helps. There's lots of things that we can do for ourselves. But I do say that I think that people neglect self-care. We can't uh, run on an empty battery. And if you're a parent or you've got lots of responsibilities, you have to look after yourself first. You have to fit your own oxygen mask first before you can help others. Very true. So again, if somebody kind of is in denial with mental health and they, they don't want to reach out, what would you say is the, the main benefits of improving your mental health? Well, it has an impact on everything else. I mean, your, your brain controls absolutely everything like consciously and subconsciously. So with, without that functioning to the best of its ability, you're not going to be able to function as an individual. So if people are in denial um, and they don't want to talk, there's not a great deal that you can do. All you can say is, I'm here when you're ready to talk. So yeah. they know that they have an avenue because I think there's a lot of people out there that think that they have nowhere else to go. And you'll see um, men in particular, suicide rates in men, I think it's above the age of 45, is it's, it's exponential, it's ridiculous how high it's getting. And then you look at somebody like Twitch. I don't know if you know Twitch, the dancer from the States, uh, nice. an, inc an incredibly successful TV personality, three beautiful kids, beautiful wife, extremely talented dancer, worked on the Ellen show as an executive producer for years. Um, and he, he committed suicide last year. So from the outside looking in, this guy had the perfect life, but yeah. you just never really know what is going on. And I've lost two male friends the same way. So I think I may be a little bit more heightened yeah. or aware of it when people are, are struggling. But if someone's in denial, you can't try and change their minds for them. You just need to let them know that there's a lifeline when they're ready, because a lot of people can just put the brick wall up if they feel like you're trying to force something out of them. Yeah, just being open and honest, I think, is the best way about it, isn't it? Giving someone a mm -hmm. venue, like you said. Yeah. Um, so what results have you seen with your clients? Have you uh, have you noticed anything? Have you got any great stories of people that have come along, maybe through exercise or anything else? Oh, tons. <laughs> um, but I will talk about one, one client in particular. So she came to me maybe six, seven years ago um, with a group of friends, extremely shy, painfully shy. She's going to know. If she hears this, she's going to know that I'm talking about her. Um, <laughs> painfully shy and yeah. what happened was uh, her friends started to drop off 
and then she was the only one but my environment is we always create a warm welcome space for everybody nobody's judged everybody has the same opportunity to exercise in our classes so if i have regulars that have been with me for years it's their responsibility to make sure that the newbies feel welcome and that's yeah. one of the things that we are regularly told thank you for the warm welcome you made us feel special we didn't feel like it was our first time so this individual has gone from being the shy retiring one at the back of the group who wouldn't say boo to anybody uh who is now a fully fledged fitness instructor right. having qualified last year um wow. and yeah she's just an inc- she, yeah she's an incredible individual she's definitely gonna know who i'm talking that i'm talking about her as well lots of others <laughs> um and you know she's she's integral like she'll come along to classes but she helps out um she does things that i'm like i don't even know where this goes and she'll just take it off me and take care of it you know she's become a lot more confident she's driving now as well she's having driving lessons um just lots of changes like that where being painfully shy and not even really wanting to come out of the house to now she's out she goes out more than all of us put together she's proper social butterfly now and like i say yeah she qualified as a fitness instructor last year amazing well done to her good on you girl (laughs) <laughs> right now in the fitness industry most people that come to our classes or ask for our help you know they do want to lose weight what do you think to this link between mental health and weight loss or weight gain do you think it is as 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 close as people say it is see i'm not sure and i don't know if that's the answer that people are going to want from me to be honest but it's it's whatever answer i choose to give as an individual yeah. I think what we forget about fitness is there are people who come who don't necessarily want to lose weight. So there could be that there are people, I've got friends that struggle to put weight on, um, but want to be fitter. So we don't promote weight loss with our classes. Uh, We talk about mental and physical well-being and also longevity and quality of life. So the majority of my audience, my audience is like 99.9% female and um maybe late 30s to mid 60s so most of my audience have had children and they're getting to a point where they feel menopausal so i deal with a lot of menopausal women i myself am perimenopausal so we all we all uh, share horror stories so i think that people really need to focus on the message that it's about quality of life as opposed to trying to lose weight if you want to lose weight that's great that's just an added benefit but we try and teach people about the benefits of fitness as a whole and we talk about things like your bone density decreasing after the age of 30 and do you want to be able to run around after your grandkids or do you want to be able to get off the toilet and unlock the step up real life benefits that's what people want isn't it yeah i think it's fitness has got to get to the point where that can't be our only selling point it's boring and it could put a lot of people off. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit more about fitness. Anybody out there who who is struggling with their mental health, what do you? What's your general advice, fitness wise? You need to find something that you enjoy doing. <laughs> yeah. You need to find something that you enjoy doing because if you don't like it, you're not going to stick to it, and that's the thing you see. So. Um, people do come because they feel low about their weight gain. So there are a percentage of people more often than not that do that. And I always say that you need to, to move, you need to, to start to move and you'll probably feel the benefits mentally quicker than you will see physically. Um, a lot, I have a lot of women that wouldn't even look in the mirror at themselves previously. And now we'll go out regularly and wear different kinds of, of clothing and everything else. So I'll always say, find something that you enjoy even though I, I teach dance fitness and I teach steps. So that's all I do at the moment because I have a full-time job as a teacher. Yeah. And I say, start with walking. If these are people that haven't even moved off the sofa for a very long time, get out in the fresh air because fresh air has been proven to have positive um, impact on your mental health. You know, if you cooped up in the house all day, especially the weather is grim right now and it's cold yeah. and you just want to put the central heating on and everything <laughs> else. I'm like, no, get up. Okay, open your windows, go outside and, and just breathe, even if you can't walk. So uh, I would always start with walking. Most of my clients would never dare set foot inside of a gym. So we try to yeah. combine um, cardiovascular exercise with body weight exercises, which is what we generally do with dance fitness. You know, when you put like your toning tracks in and stuff. Yeah. Um, so they are using body weight. They're using some kind of resistance. That's how I started with my client base. Then I moved them all onto kettlebells. So they were doing some kind of weight bearing 
exercise so i've got massive kettlebell advocates as part of my audience i think pretty much all of them have their own kettlebell um because it's a very versatile piece of kit and it's easy to store so i always say if you can do some kind of weight bearing exercise but even walking is weight bearing and combine it with cardiovascular but make your main source of exercise uh some kind of resistance training because i've been the cardio bunny and i got very very thin but I had hardly any muscle definition. And now I'm a lot bigger than I was back then, but I am strong and I feel so much better for that. I mean, there's people that I can out deadlift in the gym and they're looking at me like, what is she lifting? Or I'll get on the leg press and I can press. I mean, I think what's my max at the moment. I think I can press 113 on the, on the leg press at the moment. Fantastic. Um, I like feel I like how feeling strong makes me feel. And I like to share that with everybody. And I don't think I've had anyone yet who I've taken and done a weight session with that hasn't gone, oh my God, that was awesome being able to pick that up or swing that. Once you get over the fact that you're like, we're women, because I'm not yeah. putting on percent female, you can't bulk. <laughs> You'd have to be doing something significantly more. It's almost chemically impossible, bulk. isn't it? It is, because we don't produce enough testosterone. Yeah. So yeah, I always say find something you love and if you can include some kind of resistance training in with your workout. So I definitely think there's a link between strength and confidence. You must have seen people really come out of their shell just through strength training. Oh God, massively. Uh, I used to run a very large kettlebell class, um, all women. I used to get about 35 women come every week. And I used to, my, my uh, suspension did not like me for it. I used to carry a lot of kettlebells with me, right? So uh, <laughs> by the end of the of the the whole period of doing it, though, they all had these baskets and they all had at least two different weights in the bag because we yeah. have one for lower body and one for upper body. And there was nothing better. And I know that these people craved it. Then when I walked up to someone and took the weight off them and gave them a heavier weight, they felt like they'd been promoted. They absolutely <laughs> loved it. <laughs> and then going back to cardio, I always remember a uh, some research on the BBC and the, the, the most beneficial thing they found to make you happy is dance fitness. So, mm-hmm. you know, as being one of the forefront of the people with Zumba in your area, you must agree with that as well. Oh, 100%. If you're looking for um, that quick euphoric feeling, then you can't get any better than dance fitness. So I started off with Zumba, but as you mentioned right at the beginning, I'm the creator of Beats Fitness. And so Beats has been going since 2017, created by four mums in a dance studio. So we just jumped in and just thought like, let's wait and see what happens. And, you know, um, going into our sixth year, last year we won best dance fitness brand of the year if i got that title right congratulations Um, thank you big shock (laughs) big shock but yeah there's nothing better and if it's um if it's a client that's not exercised for a while or they might be quite big or very self-conscious so like i mean i'm busty so i get it you know but there's a lot of women that are, are bustier than me and they they hide and i've had women that have come with hoodies on covered up and everything else and like two weeks later they've got a vest top on jackets on the floor because i will literally say to them we don't care what you look like everyone else is just too busy trying not to fall over yeah you know (laughs) which is so (laughs) true in in that environment (laughs) absolutely we try and make it as fun as possible so i teach a class called glow beats um on a thursday which is another one of our programs so it's a darkened environment with disco lights and glow sticks so that is very popular because we get a lot of women that are like oh well i'm a bit self-conscious so i'll just stand at the back um and no one can see me but i team teach there's three of us that teach that class so there's always at least one of us at the front and somebody else running in and out of the crowd and if it's me i go and terrorize the students Great. so i will literally just run and bounce around in front of them and nine times out of ten i'll get the choreography wrong and then they i'll just be like don't follow me um and then they'll just be in stitches at the back if you can't laugh at yourself you know yeah that's what it's all about as being an instructor that is what it's all yeah. about isn't it absolutely Right, let's talk my favourite subject, food, nutrition. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Do you think there's any special foods that help with mental health or help with your brain power? I can only really talk about personal experience, to be honest. Yeah. I find that if I eat less meat and more veg, I feel better. 
yeah. um, that that might seem really simple and the more colorful the veg the better so um i have an intolerance to certain foods that have wheat in i'm not celiac and i'm not completely gluten intolerant but i tend to try and avoid foods with gluten in uh because they just make me feel ill and cause me yeah. pain it's not very pleasant and i know that when i avoid that and when i avoid the majority of meat so in january i usually go veggie for the whole month just because it's a thing i'm doing okay. that right now by the oh, way oh are you oh you amazing well if you need any recipes let me know um <laughs> couldn't really do it with the kids though they lasted five days and they were like mommy we want I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, definitely, if you can get more veg, even if you are still eating meats, I mean, my preference is chicken and fish, but if you can eat more veg and the more colorful, the better and drink more water. So get rid of your carbonated drinks. Try not to drink too much coffee. Try not to drink uh, like really sugary drinks. So I drink a lot of herbal tea because I'm rubbish at drinking more water. So that's how I get the majority of my water intake. Great. Those simple things, however you choose to make those meals, it's entirely up to you because it culturally so i my mum's irish and my um dad was west indian so i season my food so yeah. i can take anything really my kids are like you can t make a meal out of anything um so i can season anything and you can season things like tofu or corn or anything like that if you don't want to have meat in and the more veg you can pack in the better you'll feel so much better now i love an avocado are you a fan <gasps> Yeah, but I will eat the whole thing. None of this half an avocado now and save half a layer. <laughs> Sometimes I have two. I love them. <laughs> um, right. So food over. Let's talk lifestyle. So okay. do you think people, do you advise people to prioritize sleep, their digestion? You know, are there any other lifestyle things that people can do? Sleep. 100 percent. it's um it's not overrated it's under underrated or we underestimate yeah. sleep that's right isn't it underrated so yeah yeah there we go it's underrated so um since becoming a teacher i have to get up earlier in the morning so i mean, used to get up to take the kids to school anyway but because i actually work in a school now i'm on a quite a tight deadline if i want any time for myself before yeah. the kids get up i have to get up so um, I try to go to bed unless I'm teaching in the evenings. I try to go to bed at the same time as my kids. Now, I know that that's not uh, feasible for a lot of people, but I like to be lights out, everything and asleep by 10 if I can. That's the latest. Sometimes I go to sleep earlier than that. And the, one of the best things I ever did was buy the Calm app. So, you know, you get these apps and you can have them for free. Yeah. Well, I, I used Calm for a couple of years and that helped with anxiety for me. And then my son, who sometimes sleeps with me, got used to me listening to the Calm app. And now he asks for it. Fantastic. So, yeah, sleep, definitely. More water. Try and ditch caffeine after a certain time. For, pe for different people, it will be different. So my husband works from home and his caffeine tolerance level is quite high. Tell me if I'm getting it the wrong way around. Whereas for me, if I have a coffee after half five, I'm wired and I can't yeah. sleep then because I very rarely drink caffeine. Um, but I do like a Nescafe mocha sachet. Oh, do you? I do. I do. That's probably one of my, uh, my downfalls, but yeah, ditch caffeine before a certain time, drink more water, um, devices. If you can, I'm terrible for devices by the side of my bed. Yeah. If you can't get rid of the device from your room, put it on the other side of the room or just buy yourself a cheap alarm clock and stop using your phone because the urge to just reach out, I'm just going to pick the phone up and check Twitter and then you've lost like an hour and a half and then I'm looking going, oh, I'm one of these people that goes, if I go to sleep now, I'll have this much sleep. Yeah. You know, and then it never happens. So yeah, ditch the devices, ditch the caffeine, try and go to bed earlier. Because on like a deeper level, people talk about electromagnetic stress from phones when you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to put it into simple terms, that bright light in your mm -hmm. eyes before you're about to sleep. Is yeah. What's stopping you sleeping, isn't it? Absolutely. And don't be thinking that if it's in night mode that it happens like <laughs> any easier. Or it works better because it doesn't. Yeah, You're still going to be going, oh, I thought about that or oh the phone's yeah. just right there um that's what ha helps with the car map and it's i never get to the end of the story which is the aim of the game yeah um so i always have that on for about 40 minutes but i'm usually asleep after 10. so for anybody who doesn't know what the car map is can you explain oh yeah 
I'm not sponsored by Calm, by the way, but I probably <laughs> should be. There is other ones available, Headspace. <laughs> yeah, I used Headspace for a while as well. That was pretty good. Um, but I just gravitate. I, I can't remember how I got into Calm. I think somebody recommended it. So it's just an, an app, like a meditation app, but it contains stories. Um, and it's not just for nighttime either. There are daily meditations on there. There are wake up. Um, sto- I like the stories. Uh, there are very famous actors on there. I think they've got a partnership with Jay Shetty. If anybody knows who Jay Shetty yeah, is, yeah, we love a bit of yeah. Jay. He does a he does something called Daily Jay. So he'll do like an eight minute um, thing. I don't even know what's called. It's when it's like a talk that you can listen to in the morning. So I listen to a lot of audio books because I'm always on the go because I'm a mum. So I might have one of those on while I'm in school uniform, and it just helps your brain to to kind of tune out a little bit. Because I'm a self-confessed workaholic and I don't know when to stop. I struggle yeah. to switch off. And my husband said that to me for years. But ever since being in the routine of going to a job, and I absolutely love my job, go, having that routine of going to a job and coming home, fitness is no longer my main source of income. So now I can enjoy when I teach classes right. and I can switch switch off when I get home. And I think that's a problem that a lot of us have is we don't know how to switch off. Yeah, just having your own business where it's, you know, where it is orientated on servicing your clients, mm-hmm. it is 24-7, isn't it? So it's great that you've got that work-life balance now. Mm-hmm. Um, also, just again, talking about Calm, on YouTube, on Spotify, there's loads of great sleep meditations or motivational <laughs> meditations. Sometimes it can be just as simple as having like some nice relaxing sounds on in the background as well. Yep. Yeah. So you can get um, white noise on there. You can get uh, music played at a certain decibel as well. There's been research. I can't remember what it is. There's been research around a certain decibel. One of my friends who also works for Beats uh, was a trained singer. And she was telling me about it. If it's at a certain decibel, it it helps to soothe the mind. Um, It's incredible what, what they can do. Me personally, I respond better to somebody talking yeah to me as opposed to just having music whereas if i want to concentrate if i'm studying because i'm forever studying um <laughs> i will listen to something called lo-fi i don't know if you've heard of it no uh it's just music played at a certain again pitch or tone and it's very chilled and it might have water or something underneath it but it's very very chilled like soul r and is but without lyrics so i'll have that on in the background because i notice that i'll if I'm, i've got music on i'm constantly my thought process is just gone. So yeah. like, I couldn't I couldn't study and listen to an audio book. But if I'm ironing, doing something monotonous, or if I'm lying down in bed, then I can because I'm not doing anything else. But I find lo-fi music really good if I'm trying to concentrate. Does this work with your teenagers at school? No. <laughs> no. My God, I wish. <laughs> so I teach, yeah, high school age kids. So anywhere from 11 to 16 and most of these kids think that they they have the answer to everything <laughs> very entertaining <laughs> oh mel really you've been great so can we just uh kind of give all this advice into your top three tips for improving your mental health i'll try um so i'll say number one find exercise that you love it's been statistically proven that exercise has uh, massive benefits on people's mental health and it also benefits you from a physical perspective so you're getting two for the price of one but you must find something that you enjoy or you won't stick to it because it's consistency that's key yeah so then number two we've just been talking about sleep sleep is underrated please try and sort out your sleep pattern you don't have to burn the candle at both ends which is what a lot of fitness professionals do and people that run small businesses hustle culture is so 2020 darling we don't have to do that now okay you need to find that my friend lisa calls it a life work balance not a work life balance yeah because life is the priority there you go we work to live we don't live to work and then finally, your nutrition. It's its key. You have to put good stuff in. You wouldn't put crappy petrol in your car. So why would you put crappy food in your body? Amazing. Thank you so much for those top tips. You're welcome. Now, it is the start of January. A lot of people are making New Year's resolutions. So I want to ask you a personal question. Have you made any New Year's resolutions and how's it going? I don't call them resolutions because I think the third in itself, the word in itself is setting you up for failure. 
Yeah. So I try not to call them resolutions. Instead, I set goals and I try and look at them systematically throughout the year. So for me, um, a couple of short term goals is to be more consistent with my studying. And my short term version of that is to try and do a little bit every day. So I am studying my level four obesity and diabetes at the moment. Oh, so I great. try and answer a question a day. If I manage to do more than a question a day, then I'm good. But in addition to that, I'm also training to be a Duke of Edinburgh um, manager as well. So I can take the kids out on all these expeditions and stuff. Yeah. Even though I hate camping. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's so, lots of non-camping one. I know, there's tons, there's tons. So um, a big term goal is to be more consistent. But if I try and break it down over that period for study, it's to try and do a little bit every day. Because when I was at uni, I didn't do that. And I ended up cramming at the last minute. God knows how it passed. Uh, the other one is to try and move more. So even though I teach to do more for me, so my kind of exercise kind of thing that I like to do. So I want to get my deadlift weight right back up. So at the moment I can deadlift hundred kg. I think that's like my one rep maximum though. So the, the plan is to be more consistent so I can build on that because you know what it's like, if you ever miss out on exercise, you got to go right back and start all over yeah. again. You can't just go in and pick the same weight up. Um, so that's a fitness goal. Nutrition is to try and eat less meat based meals. And that's something that I'm doing with the children as well, because they've right. expressed an interest in eating more vegetables. Both of them are doing the eat well guide at school, just on different levels, because one's at primary and one's in high school. So I try to, to work around goals. I'm all about personal development. So it's all about improving myself, whether it's my mental health, my or my physical well being. Wonderful. Love those. <laughs> Um, where can people find you online, Mel? What's the best place to find okay. you? Okay. Um, so I use Facebook, but I use Facebook for business. I like <laughs> hanging out on Instagram. I do have a Facebook page and an Instagram account. So I'm the mummy trainer on Facebook and I'm the mummy trainer UK on Instagram. And I share a mixture of things. So I'm a big tech head. So if I buy new tech, I sometimes talk about it on there. I like to talk a lot about the menopause and pelvic floor health. So you'll see that kind of content from me. And very occasionally you'll see pictures of me and the kids and the dog, because we have a fluffy dog called Max, who's a little terror. Who often gets more likes than anything else on social the, media. The dog, the dog, 100%. I did a reel <laughs> of the dog barking at the telly and I think it was the most successful reel I'd ever done. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> struggling in the fitness industry, buy yeah, an dog. animal. It's horrible <laughs> to say it, but buy yeah. an animal. It'll go yeah. crazy. It's so true. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Mel. Keep sharing. Keep doing what you're doing. You're an amazing person. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you for asking me. Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends. And of course, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.